The American job crisis is escalating. According to the Labor Department, an additional 965,000 Americans filed for first-time unemployment benefits last week. That is up 181,000 claims from the previous week and the highest weekly total since August. This comes as President-elect Joe Biden is set to take office in less than a week. So for more on this, we want to bring in Francis Stacey, the Director of Portfolio Strategy at Optimal Capital. Um, all right, so Francis, at this point, you know, what's driving the numbers? Um, what, do the, what does this sort of latest snapshot tell us about the current state of the U.S. economy? Well, happy t uh, crazy 2021. Um, <laughs> here right. we go. Um, there are a lot of, um, you know, sort of dichotomous indicators here. But what's driving the numbers is the fact that the stimulus was a little too little, a little too late. That's one thing, you know, when they put through those $600 checks in the 11th hour. Um, obviously, Biden's coming out tonight to discuss more stimulus, which is good for Americans. The other thing is the shutdowns, of course. Some of the small businesses, um, you know, just didn't make it or laid people off. They weren't laying off. The PPP loans kind of came in again in the 11th hour. Some made it, some didn't make it. And that's what's driving these employment numbers. And also, you just didn't have the spike in hiring in retail that, you know, would be normal with the holiday season. So, uh, Francis, I, I, we want to talk more about um, how coronavirus is affecting uh, some cities and states to impose restrictions. But, but I'm looking at the S&P 500 uh, year to date. It's only the first couple of weeks of the S&P 500. But I also recall that the president of the United States, President Trump, said that if uh, President-elect Biden was elected, that the stock market would crash. We haven't seen the stock market crashing. Um, given the state of the economy now at the moment, and given that there may be some new restrictions with regards to coronavirus, um, what is the impact just on the economy going forward? And what bumps in the road could we see for the stock market, if any? Or will we continue to see a, a very sort of bullish stock market, even if the economy is weak? Right. So you have these interesting things, right? So for instance, you have stimulus is obviously a positive for the stock market, right? It's the thing that's been keeping the stock market higher uh, throughout the pandemic. And then you have, you know, comparisons of growth. You know, you're coming off the worst worst growth in history. So you're going to have a rebound off of the worst growth, growth in history um, with the best growth in history. Then you're going to have a recovery in the earnings sector. So that all sort of supports stocks staying higher. The things that sort of threaten stocks um, is if the 10-year yield and interest rates in general keep going up, that is de facto a tightening action, which actually goes against the narrative of the Fed of easing. When interest rates go up, it costs more money to service debt. Um, and so that will eventually weigh on something if the Fed doesn't come in and intervene with yield curve control. The other thing that you have is last week, $39 billion of asset purchases fell off of the balance sheet because we're, it, the balance sheet was reduced by $39 billion because the lending programs got stalled out. So then you have the Biden administration coming in with Yellen, and they're going to support lending activities from the Fed. We don't know quite what it looks like yet. And so then that's a positive for the market. But then those things falling off of the balance sheet and the Fed not keeping up with the pace of the balance sheet that has supported the markets through the pandemic, you know, would undermine the stock markets. Eventually, you're going to have a debt conversation. And the early signal for that is the all country world index, which the S&P 500 weighted against that was on an upward trend. And it actually broke into a lower trend, which tells us that the rest of the world uh, investors are signaling that the rest of the world is going to grow faster out of the pandemic. And the United States does have some bumps in the road, which first people are important, but debt ultimately is important. Hmm. Okay, so with this new administration, I mean, where do you start uh, when it comes to an economic recovery? Is it about getting those $2,000 checks out? Is it about using whatever tools the, the Fed has? You know, where do they start? I think uh, one of the things with the stimulus bill that kind of became main, you know, mainstream news was all of the pork. So I think what's going to have to happen moving forward is that all of the stimulus that's been propping everything up has to continue. People need more help. There's no question. The wealth gap is widening. Um, in New York City, you have, you know, tenants that are missing their rent and they're a billion dollars behind in rent. And then at the, on the same token, you have you know, people taking advantage of the lower rents and the 
landlord incentives. And so, you know, rents spiked for people who are doing new leases. So you have this dichotomous picture. And then you have state and local governments. You have Andrew Yang running for mayor, you know, these sort of things. And you have the Biden administration coming in. So it's just very important that the level of money being spent stays steady because that's what's propping everything up. That's what's helping people. But I would recommend that the Biden administration take some of the unnecessary spending out because at some point we're going to have to reconcile with the debt. And if you take some of the unnecessary programs or not immediately necessary programs and some of that pork out of the bill, then you have more money to help people without exacerbating the debt scenario any more than has already been done. Francis Stacy, we've missed you. Happy New Year. It's good to see you again. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. I've missed you guys. Thank you. Stay see you well. soon.